Hello everyone, this is Sharpedo43 once again, bringing you all week 13 of the NGDL. M okay, now my opponent here is actually going to be an interesting one. My opponent is actually going to be Fat Jesus and the Silverback Mammoth Swines. Originally, the oppon um, my opponent for this week was actually supposed to be, wait for it, the Venom Within and the Honolulu Hi Hippodons, which is... Um, Kind of interesting so what happened was that i was supposed to face him this week but he was replaced by fat jesus due to some insubordination on this part in the server and i think in the league as well so you know that kind of stuff happens but as a result now i have to face fat jesus and he's going to be using the venom within this draft like this the team that venom within drafted and like i said it wasn't a very bad one honestly like uh, when I first battled um, Venom, I was actually kind of scared that he can actually beat me with what he, because Venom is actually a really really good battler. It's just that he's kind of like Heisenberg and just happens to um, take things way too far when he shouldn't. But oh well, that's kind of how some people are, honestly. But yeah, this is going to be week 13. My my opponent is going to be Fat Jesus, like I said already, thousands of times already. And we're just going to get into the battle. I'm not even going to waste my time elaborating on the teams. I'm just going to say that this is what I use and this is what I use and whatnot. Hell, I don't even remember much of how this battle went. So I'm just going to go with, I'm just going to go um, say what happens as it, as it happens, basically. Like we're both going to see this together, basically, how this battle went. So he's going to lead off with Rotom Heat. I'm going to lead off with Galate, obviously. Um, I was kind of anticipating this lead, but the one thing I was not anticipating from this Rotom was that it would carry Shadow Ball. I was like, say what? I thought it would Volt Switch, trying to get a different matchup, or just try to overheat my, um, my Gallade. This Gallade is a Soul Vest, so seeing how much, seeing how Shadow Ball did that much despite it not being stabbed tells me that it's probably Choice Specs. But I still wasn't sure. It could also be Scarf. It could be Offensive, but with Choice Scarf instead of Choice Specs. And he's gonna actually switch out into Tapu Fini afterwards, cause he realizes now that it's not gonna do much. And I did get some recovery with the um, um, Drain Punch as well. I switch out and he goes into Finny, and I was like, okay, is he gonna go for Taunt? He does go for Taunt, and as a result, cause I was anticipating Taunt from this Tapu Fini, I decide to just go for the Giga Drain straight up. And looking at the damage, it does quite an amount. So because it did that much damage, blah. Because it did that much damage. Um, I'm going to predict him to switch out into what exactly? I don't even know, honestly. But I do predict him to switch out into something. He does switch out into Torterra here. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. Because I switch out and I go into Heliolisk. Which is, now that I think about it, not that good of a, um, a switch in. And the reason why is because this Heliolisk doesn't have hidden power ice for this thing. I didn't think he would bring this um, Torterra, honestly. Because I felt like my team had a lot of ice type moves. Or can have a lot of ice type coverage, so I figure, you know what, just bring Hidden Power Flying. And the reason why I brought Hidden Power Flying was because I was more afraid of him bringing that shit ninja over this Torterra, honestly. But look at that, he didn't even bring it, so that's actually kind of crazy. So I switch into Skarmor here as a result, and he's actually going to go for Elite Seed afterwards, which uh, it's kind of annoying, but I wasn't too phased by it just yet. So what I'm going to do here is stay in and go for a layer of Toxic Spikes, not Toxic Spikes, regular Spikes. And he's actually going to stay in as well and just go for the Stealth Rocks. I actually thought he would switch out. That's why I went for Spikes. But then here's where I decide, you know what? Let's just go for the Brave Bird right now. <laughs> yeah, because then um, here he's actually going to make a huge misplay and actually hard switch into Hitmonchan. I don't know why, honestly, because, I mean, Hitmonchan can easily just Brave Bird this thing to Oblivion as well. What do you, th what do you think I was going to do? Iron Head? Because <laughs> that's literally the only reason to switch in hard Hitmonchan. Because, honestly, Hitmonchan doesn't really do much otherwise. And it can't even, unless it carries Thunder Punch, it doesn't even do much to Skarmory in return either. But even then, hard switching it on a Skarmory is not really the best thing you want to do. Either way, he's now going to go into Rotom, and I'm going to be forced to switch out with Skarmory. Because, obviously, that uh, Rotom he is an Electric type and a Fire type. Two typings that Skarmory can't handle whatsoever. And I hard switch into Cradily, expecting maybe a, a Overheat or Thunderbolt. He goes for Thunderbolt, and it does quite an amount, which once again starts to confirm to me that maybe this this Rotom Heat is in fact Choice Specs. So I was like, okay. So he's going to switch out. I think what I do now is actually get my own Rocks up, I think. Yeah, I think I do get my own Rocks up. Yeah, I get my own Rocks up. And then after um, I get the Rocks up, I think I stay in and try to go for a Hidden Power Flying. Yeah, because I do have Hidden Power Flying on this um, Cradelia as well. 
like I said, it was just for that freaking Shedinja that never freaking showed up, honestly. I was really afraid of that uh, of that thing coming out because I felt like the sets that I could bring on to this team could be so standard that they won't even carry any coverage for Shedinja. So I stay in. He went for Toxic as, as I um, tried to go for Hidden Power Flying. And you're going to see right here, it's literally not going to do anything. Look at this. Look at this. This actually made me think that maybe it's... um. Either this thing is Spindef invested or my Cradilia is just that weak because of the defense investments that it has. But yeah, after seeing how pitiful that damage output was, I figured, okay, you know what? I don't think it's a good idea to stay here. Plus, I'm also toxic, so I figured, you know what? We gotta get out of here. I'm mad here. So as a result, but he's gonna switch out too. So I was like, oh great, what is he gonna switch into now? He goes into Tapu Fini, and I think I switched into Skarmory here actually because I was gonna try to like Brave Bird it again or just phase him or something like i was actually gonna force him to do a bunch of things basically but i think my skarmory was also weakened so i think the plan also was just to go for roost but since he just double switched on type of finny and i um, switched in skarmory as well i think what i try to do here is actually hope he goes for defog to get rid of the hazards while i go for roost but here he's actually gonna make a more ingenious play and he's actually go for taunt prevent me from going for roost because he knew i was gonna try to go for roost and then then as he forces me to switch out because I can't do anything with Skarmory on top of Finny, he's actually now going to go for the Defog, which is, like I said, ingenious. So I'm forced to switch out, and I go into Heliolisk, I believe, because I didn't think he was going to go for Moonblast. I'd be surprised if he goes for Moonblast, honestly, or even Nature's Madness. But he does, in fact, go for Defog, which was what I was anticipating. And now here, I think I decide to go for the Hyper Voice. The reason why is because he has two ground um, Volt Switch immunities on his team. He has Torterra, and he has the Nido King, and I didn't want to get, I didn't want to be choice locked in the Volt Switch. So he is gonna switch out, and he does anticipate the Volt Switch now because I haven't gone for it yet. So here he's gonna go into Nido King, and I am just gonna go for the Hyper Voice, and because my Heliolisk is Modest Scarf, I think even Timid Scarf, it would have done, it would have been a two hit KO either way, I think. But because it's Modest Scarf, I know for a fact that it's going to two hit KO now. So. I think this was also from experience from battling Venom within. Like I saw how Modest Scarf um, Heliolisk was able to two-shot the Nidoking, so I knew he could do it again. Unless he ran like a Salt Vest or something, which I would have known directly from the damage output on switching, basically. So yeah, now he's going to go into Porygon 2, and I'm going to switch into Glade here, because I was anticipating maybe like a Toxic or an attempt at Thunder Wing. But here, this guy is actually going to surprise me with a completely, in my opinion, wacky ass set. What the hell? He's actually running Z conversion Porygon 2, not Porygon Z, Porygon 2. He's running Z conversion on it. And he's actually going to turn himself into the ghost type, which is like, wow. Did this guy like hard prepare for my Gallade or something? Because this really is starting to seem like it. I stay in with Gallade because at this point I'm, I'm kind of dumbfounded at the fact that he's actually running Z conversion ghost on the Porygon. I go for knockoff just to get some damage off. And then here I'm just going to go for Shadow Sneak as well. My Galate was able to take that um that Shadow Ball because first of all it's not adaptability boosted and second of all my um, Galate was actually Assault Vest so yeah because I was expecting to take a bunch of special attacking hits but I didn't expect a bunch of super effective special attacking hits honestly. Like he has Shadow Ball on that Rotom and now he has Shadow Ball on this too. Like what the hell? Why are you running so much Shadow Balls? Are you obsessed with Shadow Ball or something? I don't know. I'm just kidding. But either way um, I'm going to go into Sharpedo here and I do go for the... Um, protect because for some reason I thought I would actually be um, slower and plus I could use the speed boost in case I do manage to take out this Porygon too because it's a ghost type he goes for recover it doesn't put him exactly at half HP and I am gonna mega evolve right here because I think at plus one I can outspeed literally everything else on his team so what I'm gonna do here is go straight for the crunch and because I'm adamant Sharpedo and not um, Jolly Sharpedo this time I actually do have enough to just take out this Porygon too even at plus one defense because it's a ghost type and it's super effective and whatnot. So that was actually really, 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 really good for me. So I go for Crunch right here on the um, on the Torterra. I was actually gonna just sack the, the Sharpedo, honestly, but he actually stayed in and went for Leech Seed. So I was like, oh, okay, so now I can actually abuse Sharpedo even more and go for another Crunch. So I that's exactly what I do. I felt like for some for some reason I also felt that I could have maybe taken it, the Torterra out from where it was right here. So I do go for another crunch. He is going to actually switch out and go back into Tapafini. So I was like, oh, okay. 
But seeing how I already got prior damage on the type of Finny, I figured, okay, after this crunch, what I'm going to do is try to see if I can KO it with Poison Jab, because I actually do carry this Poison Jab on Sharpedo, because I wasn't anticipating this type of Finny, honestly. So what I'm going to do here is, looking at the damage here, I kind of felt like because I'm Adam and Sharpedo, maybe I'll be able to take out the type of Finny. Maybe, just maybe. Because Jolly Sharpedo has always been able to take out Tapu Fini somehow with um, Poison Jab, but this is Adamant Sharpedo, so it should be able to take it out right here, right? And it actually doesn't, unfortunately. It was close to, but it actually didn't, unfortunately. So this Tapu Fini was probably definitely max defense, if that was the case. And here he's gonna go for Skull, get a crit. It's not. I don't care about the burn, honestly, just because it's not gonna happen, because Misty turn, obviously. And here, I guess he went for Skull because he was predicting me to switch out. I didn't want to switch out because I had Poison Jab, so I figured why not go for it. So, crazily enough, my Omega Sharpedo actually did put quite the amount of work here without even trying. Like, all this time, I was just sack ready to sack Sharpedo, and all this time, it's all, all it's been doing is just nothing but putting in the finest of work. Like, here, I just pressured Jesus so hard. It was crazy. Now, here, he's going to go into Torterra, and I was like, okay. I don't know if I'll be able to take out this thing with a Crunch now that it got a lot of HP back. But um, I was already sacking this thing to begin with, so I'm perfectly like fine with this, honestly. So yeah, here he's gonna go for the earthquake, I guess, just to get damage off. I don't know why. He, well, yeah, cause I mean, if he goes for a wood hammer, he's gonna die basically. So yeah, takes out my mega sharpedo, which is fine because my sharpedo, holy cranberries, it put in quite the amount of work, and I'm actually proud of sharpedo for that. That's actually crazy. Either way, here I'm gonna go into um, Healerisk, go for hyper voice, finish off this Torterra. And I think his last Pokemon is the Rotom Heat that he's been keeping in the back of his team for so long. And I think I'm just going to go for Hyper Voice as well because it's definitely going to be in range of um, Hyper Voice due to the fact that I think this thing actually is going to take Stealth Rocks damage because... Oh no, never mind. No Stealth Rocks damage. I'm just going to be able to finish this thing off with the Hyper Voice because my Modest Spectilos is actually kind of powerful. But not really because I actually am not able to take out this Rotom Heat. But my Helios doesn't die like I remember it not dying. Because of the fact that he locked himself in the Thunderbolt and not overheat like I kind of was thinking he would, honestly. So as a result, I just am able to finish off this battle. 4-0 no, over Fat Jesus in the Silverback Mamoswines, which is excellent, honestly. Because now I actually got a good score, honestly. And, um, yeah, so I think with this win now, we're going to be at 10-3. and three. Now, is this going to be the last NGDL match? Nope. But, um... There is one thing that I will say, because there was one more week that I had to do in the NGDL, and unfortunately I am not able to um, show that battle because unfortunately there was no battle for week 14. My opponent for that battle was actually supposed to be Use, and as a result um, I was supposed to battle him, and since he and I couldn't come up with it, well actually he was actually absent from the server for quite a long time so I couldn't really necessarily get a hold of him. But I did try um, DMing him, and eventually the snack told me that, that he just forfeited. So I was like, oh, okay, so no battle, I guess. So basically, I won week 14 as well. So therefore, I'm now 11 and 4. 11 and 3, I mean. So once again, is this the last NGDL battle? Well, nope, actually, not really. Because um, due to my performance in the NGDL um, season, I'm actually now qualified for the playoffs. So yeah, I'm going to be posting three more battles from the um playoffs because yeah there's actually three rounds of playoffs rather than two it's usually two but for some reason the snack decided to make it he he made the playoff system a little bit weirder honestly like he made it so that now eight players can make it to playoffs practically creating like a mini tournament where there's round one and then there's round uh, the semifinals and then there's the finals I don't know. I personally, well, I, I I can appreciate the innovation of the setup of the playoffs. I kind of didn't like it at the same time just because of the fact that now people like Toronto Pure can actually also make it to playoffs. And even Fat Jesus can make it to playoffs, honestly. But, oh well, what are you going to do? It's the snack. He does what he wants. Crap, freaking slang it. Anyways, good game to Fat Jesus once again. And thank you all for watching this battle. And hope you guys stay tuned for the playoffs of the NGDL, at least from my perspective. So yeah, um, catch you guys later and take it easy.